Rabbits are falling over this week. Coming up, Roy gets out his FAC FX. And at 70 yards, halfway between 1.5 and 2, we're smack on. As Jamie gets his gun, we have hot air, we have air streaming. Welcome to Airheads. Roy is keen to start stretching the legs of his high-powered FX22. He wants to shoot quarry at range with confidence, so he needs to do some homework and understand the drop-off of the pellet and how this corresponds to the reticle in the March scope, which is another thing to get his head around. This is the first scope Roy's used with the reticle in the first focal plane. So, as well as trying to shoot straight, he will try to explain what that means. The most interesting thing about the March scope that we've got fitted on the FX rifle here is that it has it comes with an M rad reticle scale. Now that is set in the first focal plane. So basically what that means is it doesn't matter how far you zoom in or out, you've still got exactly the same scale to allow you to calculate your drop off. It will become a little bit clearer because we're going to be filming through the scope when we're doing some of the, the target shooting out to range and you'll see that we should have exactly the same values of drop-off whereas with a normal scope you have to stay at one magnification range and then work out your drop-offs because as soon as you change your magnification range that changes the value of the drop-off on the reticle. Right before we get to the rabbits let's see where the pellets land at ranges from 30 to 70 yards thanks to the Eagle Eyes scope add-on with GoPro. He's had to move the sports match mount slightly to accommodate the Eagle Eye but it doesn't interfere with the eye relief at all. There is a strong wind today but it's coming from behind and across Roy's left shoulder. Okay, so we've got two shots at 30. What we're going to do now is we're going to shoot out to 40 and 50, work out what our drop-offs are. But what I want to die and do is show you just how the reticle works. So uh, you're going to be seeing exactly what I'm seeing as we're zooming in and out. So what I was saying about it being on the first focal plane. So as I zoom out, the reticle values are staying exactly the same. So just to show my point, we'll zoom right out. And I've got the crosshairs right on the target. And we've got the reticle pointing down. If you look at the lower dot, the five, the number five on the lower end of the reticle scale is on the lower target. And if I zoom in, keeping zero on the target, five is still on the lower target. So for our values on the reticle, it's not changing as we're changing the zoom on the scope. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to the 40 yard target, I'll focus that in about there and then it's going to be a very simple case we'll take a shot just see where it lands on the scale and then at 40 we know that's the point that we're going to have to put on our quarry so load another one up i might just zoom in a little bit because we know we're not going to drop that far off the scale oh and we're smack on at 40. We'll move over to 50, just refocus. Now I would expect to see a little bit of a drop up for 50, but we'll just take a shot to give us some sort of idea where we are. There we go, target acquisition again. So at the moment we are zoomed in at about 29 times, we can come right in. So that is at 40 times magnification. There you can get very close and personal with the target, which I do like. I am a magnification junkie when it comes to shooting. So we'll put the scale on the target at 50. 
and we've dropped by half a point on there. We should just come up the scale, so it's just over the half mark. So what we'll do is we'll put the half on the top of the ring there, 12 o'clock. And so we've got half a value and a shot. And there we go. So we've got a little bit of windage there. So just taking them over a touch. We'll take another shot. And we're spot on. So we know at 50 that we've got an aim point of just in between the half and the one. So what we'll do now is we'll take it out to 60 and 70 and just see what values that gives us. Now we've just gone and uh, replenished the shoot and see targets and these really are a godsend um, for all forms of shooting. So whether you're shooting long range with the uh, four bore rifles or whether you're using an air rifle, it just allows you to pick up exactly where you are. Uh, you can zero precisely a lot quicker with them. Um, you know, they're not, they're not the cheapest targets in the world, but they are absolutely superb. So, as I say, I've been using them for a number of years now, and I do find them invaluable. Okay, so, see what we're going to do is go straight to the 60 target. We know, obviously, that we are going to get a drop-off, but to give us what sort of, well, to give us an idea of our drop-off value, we're going to put the crosshairs straight on the target, and then we should be able to see on the box a rough mark of where we need to be going. Okay, so we are almost smack on the one. So we'll reload, come up on the rest call to one. And that went about the right height, but over. But again, that could quite easily be wind. So that's starting to get out of where I would comfortably shoot a rabbit with this sort of wind because we're starting to come out of the centre ring on there so if we've got a windy day like this I would try and keep my shooting to 50 and below out to 60 that's starting to stretch out we'll put another pellet in there and again it's just over to the right slightly from that wind we're going to move it over onto the 70 yard target and just see where we are here okay and we've got quite a drop on there it looks around about between 1.5 and 2 so we're a rough go at that the wind has pushed it a little bit as well so 1.5 to 2 here and we'll see where that takes us I'm just going to hold off a little bit to the left to allow for a little bit of wind. And that'll about do us. So we know with the windage, we were having to come hold off to the left a little bit. And at 70 yards, halfway between 1.5 and 2, we're smack on. With the prep done and the rifle scope pellets and Roy doing the job, it's time for some rabbits. From the fence line, we spot two. Ready? Next one to the right. Yep. Yes, yeah, so over 30, about 30, 35 yards. So we know that out to 40, we've got a very flat trajectory. So it was spot on um, on the crosshairs out of that. So both of those are down. We'll uh, get cracked on and see if we can get a few more. So again, if we can just pick up half a dozen rabbits just for the birds and uh, ferrets and what have you just quickly then uh, that'll be about perfect. There's a rabbit sitting up there. Then. So again that's just on about 40. And that's another one down. The second rabbit we shot was just on the edge of the hole and you might think it's completely disappeared or you've missed but if you look in you can actually see some blood congealing in the sand there. So he's down there, we're just going to have to put our arm down there and see if we can get hold of him. There we go. 
Excellent. Roy takes up one of his favourite spots to scan the field and burrows. There are some out at about 100 yards. Roy uses the opportunity to reinforce the capability of the march. This rabbit here is sitting out at 100 yards, so you could quite easily take a shot on that. I mean, we don't know the drop off and it's too windy to try it. But just to show you what 40 times zoom looks like with your crosshairs on the first lane, we'll take it out, zoom right out to give you some sort of idea of where it is, okay? So that is still an absolutely fantastic picture. The clarity is superb, even filming through the eagle. And we can just zoom back into him. And if we knew our drop-offs and it wasn't windy, we could quite easily play with them. Spinning around, we spot another couple of rabbits. Okay, one came out just behind us at 20 yards. So poked his head just off out of the nettles there. So gave us a lovely shot there. Our final bunny puts all Roy's prep into practice. We have a rabbit at 60 yards. I'll zoom in just a little bit, get focus. So, and spot on. Excellent. So, it worked absolutely perfectly. So that was a 60 yard rabbit, he just went down into the, uh, the hole there, so hopefully he'll just be on the entrance of the hole there. That was up on the elevation, onto the one mark which we knew 60 was at, and straight in, job done. And uh, oh, I can't emphasise enough how much fun this is. Again, the, um, the FX air rifles are just absolutely phenomenal in FAC, and it just everything that we're, uh, we're coming on to, everything that we're pointing at, um, obviously within a, a permissible, sensible range with the wind that we have today has been absolutely superb and a superb way of getting some nice fresh meat for the table as well. Roy now has a very productive air rifle set up from the sports match mounts to the FX pellets and the March scope. Next time we'll see if it's sensible to push them even further. For more information about these products find the links in the film's description. Great shooting there by Roy and if you are one of the very few people who have not seen his seminal pellet power and performance air gunning film, nearly three million views, then click on the link on the screen. Now someone with three million followers on Twitter. Not. It's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. Bear Grylls recently removed references to snaring in his survival lineup, but he's up to his neck in air gunning. The TV celebrity has hooked up with Gamo to launch a new line of air pistols and rifles, including a 177 air rifle for under £100. One of the big events of the air gun year, the Midland Game Fair, returns to Western Park in Shropshire on the 19th and 20th of September 2015. It will see the launch of Daystate's new range of pellets, designed by the German pellet manufacturer H&N. Based on the popular H&N Fields Target Trophy, they are branded the Kaiser series and come in screw-top tins of 500. The Welsh and the English did well in the World Field Target Championships in Lithuania in August. Jack Harris from Wales came second and Welsh shooters took fourth and fifth. Ian Taylor from England came third. First placed was Sergei Zubenko from Russia. This is Daystate shooter Wyan Shewinkle from South Africa at the event. There's a new field target series in the USA. Crossman Corporation has partnered with the American Airgun Field Target Association to create the Crossman National Field Target Series. Fancy shooting air guns and helping Help for Heroes and a Young Shots programme? Well, Basque is organising an airgun and a clay pigeon shoot at Cricket St Thomas in Somerset on the 5th of September. A brand new BSA Comet Evo air rifle is the top prize. Plus, there's hot and cold refreshments and a bar. And finally, a pensioner who was driven potty by seagulls waking him up at 3.30am every morning, took out an air rifle and shot one. Now Clive Preswell from the Wirral is going to court accused of wounding the protected birds. The case comes after a series of worrying incidents involving gulls across the country, 
including Dog Roo, pictured cradled by his young owner, who was killed. And this is Jan Byrne, who found her tortoise, Stig, being pecked to death by seagulls, which left it drowning in its own blood. Even Prime Minister David Cameron has said something needs to be done about them. You are now up to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Now Jamie is out stalking a horse paddock. Last time we were out with Jamie, the shooter with no hands, he and friend Tom were trying to make an impression on the farm Corvid population. This time it's pest control in a pony paddock. There is a huge warrant running almost the length of this hedge uh, from the other side. The gamekeeper has never really cleaned it out the other side. And the chaps here have never really had or known anyone who can come up and shoot them. And so it's a sort of a trade-off between the holes which cause horses to sprain or possibly even break legs, or having the rabbits. Um, the great thing is the guys who own this um, are really keen on rabbit meat and pigeon meat, so it's a question of shooting them in their back garden and delivering it to their front door. Well, rabbit control is our intention. One rabbit comes out for a look, but the gods of accuracy are not smiling on Jamie today. Not that is until a pigeon lands in the branches. Now, pigeons do not dig holes that cause horses to break their ankles, but they are pests nonetheless. One bird down, but down is not picked and the lesson to learn today is not just about accuracy of shot, but making sure you will be able to find the bird or animal afterwards. Tom says if it ain't picked, it don't count. I saw feathers, it was aiming straight at the back. Um, so, so cynical. Jamie realises he's going to have to get through two rows of barbed wire fence in order to look for it in the middle of a clump of hawthorn. Tom is not sympathetic. Another win for the shotgun there. You used the shotgun about four times today, and to be honest yes, with missed you, everything, I know, I know. Not judging the shotgun, clearly it was because it was silenced as opposed to your usual fine marksmanship. Eventually Jamie comes back and he is, so to speak, empty-handed. Yes, another um, good shot. Um, saw the pigeon drop, but I'll be stuffed if I can find it. And when I say stuffed, I think I have stuffed myself full of hawthorns trying to find it. So uh, that's the main part. <laughs> is, is there a lesson to be learned about not shooting things which are going to fall into deep thick cover? There is, but then at the same time, there's also uh, the, the flip side of that lesson, which is uh, the landowners want the pigeons gone. So whether it's me shooting it and the fox picking it, picking it up, or me being able to give it back to them for a lovely supper, um, I think we're quids in either way. Um, and the fact that one of the landowners is just down there enjoying the horses uh, means that she actually saw the shot as well, so she's delighted. Win-win, I'd say. So there you have it. A clean kill, not a clean retrieve. Jamie is a remarkable shooter, but he is no field trial champion. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Let's see what other air gunners have been throwing up on YouTube. It is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Some of the big hitters of the YouTube air gun community are out with new films this week. Air Arms Hunting SA is at East Cape Bushveld Hunting, and this time his Wolverine is fitted with a night sight eagle to bag a few hares. Hunter's Vermin brings out Air Rifle Hunting Farm Yard Vermin Control 27, a new permission where the farmer wants him to try and reduce the number of crows coming in to feed on the cattle meal. And Squirrel Hunter offers pest control with Air Rifle's Rat Shoot in the nettles. He is at a poultry farm for a night's shooting. Doyen of the old-fashioned media, Terry Doe takes a detailed look at the high-tech world of air arms air gun production, which has him showing off the relatively low-tech world of tissue paper. Ah, says Artel, but not just any tissue paper. Next up, more of a comedy drama. This is an entertaining version of Plinking by Air Gun Depot. How to beat teenage boredom with the Wolfer Terrace. You will see what I mean. BHTV reviews the Brocock Contour Super 6 Elite 
in 2.2 over three weeks of shooting. Impressive. Air Gun Review looks at the Umarex Walther CP99, a multi-shot CO2 pistol which he says can be used for back garden plinking up to eye pass. And finally, Florida Bullfrog, I like a lot, gives his Benjamin Marauder a moderate high-powered tune for JSP Kings. This is the follow-up to his Inside My Custom 25 Benjamin Marauder film. Click on the links to watch the videos or you'll find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. We are back in a couple of weeks. This has been Airheads. Thanks for watching.